Now it's time to talk about interpolation. Interpolation is used to find the unknown value of some function based on known values in its vicinity. This often happens when we have data at discrete points, but we want to know a value in between those given data points. We already discussed linear interpolation in our series on trigonometry. If you missed that lesson, check it out before continuing so you're up to speed. This is a graph borrowed from that lesson. We will use this as a starting point to develop some more advanced methods. This is a graph of y equals sine theta, where theta is measured in degrees. It is virtually identical to the previous graph without the yellow interpolation line. For better calculations, I have taken the previous graph and normalized the range. Basically, instead of 0 to 90, the x-axis is now 0 to 1. To do this, I simply divided every angle theta by 90. If I were to run a linear interpolation between 0 and 90 degrees, x equals 0 and 1 in this graph, the equation of the line would be as seen here, y equals x. Based on linear interpolation of these two values, sine of 58 degrees is approximately 0.64444. This is quite a bit lower than the true value of 0.848048. So what if I choose three known data points instead of two? That allows me to interpolate a second order polynomial. The equation for that parabola can be seen on the screen. Don't worry just yet about how to find the coefficients. Excel has a built-in capability of finding those, and that's what I did in this case. The important thing to note for now is that the orange dashed curve hugs the blue solid curve a lot more closely than the line did in our previous graph. When we crunch the numbers, it turns out that quadratic interpolation yields an answer much closer to sine 58 degrees than linear interpolation did. Specifically, 0 0.834261 is much closer to the true value of 0 0.848048. Let's take it a step further. By choosing four known data points, I can interpolate a third order polynomial. This orange dashed curve also hugs the blue solid curve quite closely. Crunching the numbers once more, we find our interpolated value is even closer to the true value. It may seem like to get a better interpolated value, we simply use a polynomial of a very high order. I emphasize great caution here. This assumption can get us into trouble, as we will see in another lesson. We learned earlier, in our lesson on linear interpolation, that we may get a more accurate answer if we can find data points closer to the desired value. In that case, we chose 57 degrees and 60 degrees because they closely bound 58 degrees. Unfortunately, we don't always have the luxury of choosing nearby values. Also, I've exaggerated this example to 0 and 90 degrees in order to emphasize the point. Hold that thought on our sine function for a moment. It seems fitting that you can run polynomial interpolation on polynomials and get pretty good results. That is a valid assumption, so we are going to take a brief detour down that road in order to better understand. Here is a plot of a third order polynomial. Notice the data in the x column is spaced every 0.5 units. What if we wanted to know the value at x equals 4.8? Can we read that directly off the table? No, but we can interpolate between known values. In order to do that, let's first take a look at this table. Notice the last three columns. Each value is simply the difference of two numbers in the previous column. This is shown in color coordination. Each blue value is the difference between the red values immediately to the left. For example, negative 6.875 minus negative 18 is equal to 11.125. That was a forward difference table. This is a backward difference table. Notice the numbers are the exact same and computed in a similar way. They are just shifted downward. We will use the forward difference table for the next equation. Before we do, it is worth noting that every value in the last column is equal to 0.75. This is the third column of differences. Do you think this is a coincidence, considering we took this data from a third order polynomial? 
Now we plug those numbers into this equation, which amounts to a third order polynomial. That would be equivalent to cubic interpolation. H is the spacing between x values. In this case, it equals 0 0.5. Our interpolative value equals negative 8.208. Let's look at the same question in a slightly different way. It can be a useful thing to make the spacing h equal to 1. That is what I've done here. Otherwise, the graph is virtually unchanged in appearance. Next, I shift the graph. Since we wanted the value at x equals 4.8, I shifted the graph such that x equals 4.5 is on the y-axis. This explains the notation f sub 0 in the equation we'll see shortly. This is the same forward difference table we saw just a moment ago. I've highlighted in orange the numbers we're going to use. In case you wonder where the 0.6 comes from in the next slide, it is a result of scaling and translating our x values as I was attempting to show in the graphs. This looks very similar to the previous equation we used. The primary difference is that we've eliminated h, which just makes the computation a bit simpler and less prone to input error. Since we knew the function from the outset, we can compare our interpolative values to the exact answer. Looks like in each case they match. So it is that a cubic polynomial can be interpolated exactly with cubic interpolation. Now back to the main show with our sine function. To compare to Excel's quadratic fit, I'll first pull equally spaced data from theta equals 0, 45, and 90 degrees. Then I produce this forward difference table. I get h equal to 1 by using t instead of x. Below the table, I show how to transform x into t. So x equals 58 degrees becomes t equals 1.288888 repeating. Since we set h equal to 1, we can use the expression in the second line. In the third line, I plug in the numbers, which gives me 0 0.834267. Within rounding, this is the number we got from Excel's second order polynomial. What if I use a backward difference table instead? We should get the same answer in the end, but the intermediate steps will vary in the details. For one thing, the transformation from x to t looks different. x equals 58 degrees becomes t equals negative 0.71111 repeating. Again, we can use the expression in the second line because h equals 1. Notice the difference in sign. We compute t plus 1 instead of t minus 1. Also, we are reading off a different row from our backward difference table. The answer in the fourth line, 0 0.834267, is the same as we got from forward difference. This is reassuring. I'll have to pull four equally spaced data points from theta equals 0, 30, 60, and 90 degrees in order to compare Excel's cubic fit. This forward difference table is a result of that x equals 58 degrees is transformed into t equals 1.93333 repeating. Here you can see where I plug in the numbers. Our final answer is 0 0.847758. We could also use a backward difference table. Notice that x equals 58 degrees becomes t equals negative 1.0666 repeating. Again, note the change in sign. We use t plus 1 and t plus 2 instead of t minus 1 and t minus 2. Plugging the numbers from our table into the expression gives me the same result as forward difference. So why do these numbers differ slightly from Excel's values? My suspicion is that Excel only gave us four digits after the decimal place, whereas here I am using six. That would mean there's probably some round-off error. What we have been looking at is called the Gregory-Newton forward interpolation formula and the Gregory-Newton backward interpolation formula. In today's lesson, we stopped at third order, but these can be extended to as high an order as you'd like. Just keep following the pattern. In case you were curious about how to get the coefficients that Excel gave us in the previous screen, 
Those can be found by plugging the numbers from our forward difference table into the Gregory-Newton forward interpolation formula, expanding, and then collecting like terms. The concept is quite straightforward. However, the algebra can be very tedious, so I leave the task open to the audacious. At any rate, the final answer can be seen in the last line. This matches Excel's values for a cubic fit of the data. In case you were still curious, there is an easier way to get the coefficients seen in the last line. It involves setting up a 4x4 matrix from the x and y data. Solving this system of equations is far less tedious. I omit the details here. Just know that there is more than one way to skin a cat, and some ways are better than others. We mentioned before that the accuracy of interpolation improves the closer your data is to the desired value. Here I have narrowed the range between 48 and 66 degrees. By selecting evenly spaced data points each time, I would like you to find the linear, quadratic, and cubic interpolation of x equals 58 degrees. Make a difference table and then use the Gregory-Newton interpolation formula. See how your answers compare to those we saw today. Let me know in the comments section below if you discover any interesting insights along the way. Thank you for watching this lesson. If you learned something new, would you please consider sharing this video with a friend who could also benefit from the material? I appreciate your support. Until next time.